Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Six Days of Strange Sacrifice. God, now the game's starting to blend together. When we last left off, we saw um Doctor, I'm sorry, not Doctor Malcolm Somerset turn into the caretaker. And you're probably wondering what did that ending mean exactly? With you know the guards finding him, basically he slit his own throat inside the psychiatric, psychiatric hospital. Well, this document will give us more insight into what that was. Freehorn's blade is one of the Order's most sacred relics. It is said to have been used by the, 18th, by the 18th century prophet Jack Freehorn himself to deliver the Twelve Sacrifices that enabled him to write the books of Jizo. When a person dies, their body, mind, and soul separate and drift apart. An individual killed by Freehorn's blade, however, separates differently. They leave their body behind, while the mind and soul remain together. This results in a non-corporal spirit of the unusual ability, capable of strong manifestations, but they remain forever under the command of the one who wielded the blade. An individual can exploit a loophole in these rules by killing themselves with Freehorn's blade, which would theoretically transform them into an immensely powerful spirit, a magic-infused force of pure will. None, however, have yet chanced this. However, the first one to chance it was Malcolm Somerset, and that is why he became the caretaker the person who was able to see both the past, present, and future, and help guide people along to their destinies. In a sense, god damn it, now this really is starting to look like the frickin' uh, Defoe Manor basement. In a sense, Malcolm Somerset is the most freed individual of the entire Chizo series, and I'll explain that uh, in the epilogue of this game. Will you three come with me into the hub? If that is if that is what you order, we do only as we're told. How many how many of you are there? We don't know. When any of us fail, another comes here to take our place. So if you die, I can come back here and there'll be more of you. Until there are no more. Personally, I'm in no hurry to die. Come on. Anyway, we can read that document, but we're not going to, since I'm just going to show you how to do get past this final puzzle. As we enter a new room of the place, save for the floor, a truly clone will die by the prince. Basically, what we need to do, we need to travel into different locations to pick up the artifacts of John Defoe. His apron, his machete, and his welding mask. But make sure that every time you do this, you come back to here and click on the door so you can get more truly guards. Why are we doing this? Well, basically, if you remembered, that's pretty quick. If you remember what our our good friend um, Malcolm said, we physically need to become John Defoe, and the way to do this is by collecting his um, remnants of his pe of, of his past or his costume. Once we've accomplished this, we can basically do something that's pretty damn interesting. Now then, you're probably wondering what happens if you're to enter another room at this point besides the foyer. Uh, John Defoe will come and stab you in the face. No! This does not lead to a game over. You just wake up in the uh, barracks and, oh, I woke up. Ooh. It's a cop, cop tease. I was, there are, you can't, there's no way to get a game over in this game. Yeah, there's plenty of ways for you to die, but, well, no, there, no, there's no way to die in this game. That, that kind of ticks me off a tad bit. But, anyway, I digress. We'll continue on. And now we have the final piece of John Defoe's clothing. All we need to do now is make our way towards the basement. Oh no! All the trilbies are now dead. Come on, Decob. Yeah, no matter how much John Defoe freaks out, he'll he won't appear. At least to my knowledge. Come on! Guy was a bitch to try to go down the stairs the first game, and it's a bitch to go down them in this one. Anyway, now that we have more trilbies and things are a bit more calm, we're going to go and make our way into the dining room. Which, ironically enough, the portraits still exist. We're going to open this door. Alright, now here's the portal. Now, before we can do anything on the portal, we have to right-click on the outfit. And it gets hurts. Right-click on the hole, outfit. We will get into John Defoe's outfit, and we can now go through the hole, in which the last trilby dies. Father! It hurts. Should have. Father! K 
killed you. Demon. Demon. Demon child. It hurts. Father. Child. I saved him. Father. Demon child. I brought him back. No. Child. It hurts. Demon. 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 The arrogant man. Hold me. I killed. Go into space. The prince. It hurts. I love this scene because it takes every single character from the game and puts them in this really surreal falling down moment. The guide. The floating man. It hurts. The arrogant man. Oh, I love this scene. Defoe. Defoe Manor. Are you the last one? I think so. The others went into the house. They never came out. Does that mean anything to you? Does that spark any memories? I think the others were killed. When I think that, images start to flash before my eyes. Defoe Manor being here feels wrong. I think it's supposed to have been destroyed. In what way destroyed? Fire. It's supposed to have been burnt down. Perhaps you should address this inconsistency. Yes. How? I can show you where to get some petrol. What the hell? I can feel something like a flat metal surface above my head. Okay. I push as hard as I can, but it won't move. Keep on doing this. It's moving. And would explain... Focus the cop. It's not really happening. What the hell? And that would explain the ending of... Um, seven days. Final. I'm going to save here in case this cutscene goes on way too long, which I've got a feeling it will. Looks like a large cuboid object covered in tarpaulin. I don't think it belongs here. Let's see what's under here, shall we? There's some kind of document lying on it. Add it to my journal. Children of the King, rejoice, for the time is finally at hand. Our patience these last few centuries will finally be rewarded. Two hundred years ago, the body of the Bridgekeeper was destroyed. Two hundred years from now, the soul of the Bridgekeeper will meet the same fates. These are known as bridge events. Their significance was so great that they sent ripples of weakness through the timeline itself, echoing off in bo to both the past and future. On the 28th of July, 2189, the ripples from the, the past will collide with the ripples from the future, creating an area of extreme weakness between the two realms. The third bridge event, the destruction of the mind, occurs at this point. The force of the explosion will penetrate that area of weakness and form the bridge between the realms. Over the bridge, the king, the king Chizo, will come, and he will come to save us all and all of men of technology from sin. We must, however, be alive to enjoy this new age of perfect purity, and so it is important that the complex and ophthalmology building be evacuated at least one week prior to the bridge event. Oh, well, what do you know? It is one week afterwards. Oh, no. It's a bomb! There's enough nano-explosive here to, atom to atomize the country! Save one more time. 